Hey team, today I'd like to explain the difference between cavitation and ventilation and I'll be prepared to bet that the majority of you guys have been using the wrong term for your entire lives. So let's explain. To start with, this here is not an anti-cavitation plate. It's in fact an anti-ventilation plate. Now, as per usual, I found a brilliant video. Um, the professor here explains cavitation sensationally well. Passionate guy, I've axed and slashed again to give you your executive summary. So watch this for 90 seconds, it's worth it, and come back to me at the end for a summary. It is a well-known fact that water boils at 100 degrees centigrade. However, few people will know that at different pressures, the water will boil at different temperatures. If you increase the pressure, as in a pressure cooker for instance, then the boiling point of the water increases. Hence the cooking is more efficient. Few people will know, however, that at reduced pressures, water will boil at lower temperatures. I have here a vacuum pump and I'm going to turn on the vacuum. This flask here contains water and we have it connected to a pressure gauge and we're reading at the moment approximately 15 pounds per square inch which is one atmosphere. I turn on the pump, you notice the pressure dropping immediately and as the pressure drops, as we approach zero, bubbles start to form and the water starts to boil. So here we are at room temperature but at a significantly reduced pressure, almost, almost the complete vacuum, the water is now boiling. Water boiling at 20 degrees centigrade at almost zero pounds per square inch, a remarkable phenomenon, sir. When a submarine's propeller turns quickly, an area of low pressure is created on the blades. This lowering of pressure causes the water to boil without heating up and produces bubbles of steam. This is called cavitation. Thanks for that, Professor Smart. So, team, you can see that cavitation is those bubbles. Now, what is aeration? So, aeration is actually when potentially the leg on the outboard is too short and the propeller is too close to the surface, or when you're turning tight on a powerboat, the leg gets, the propeller gets up close to the surface of the water and aerates. So, we've all heard it through the characteristic roaring of the engine as the propeller loses grip in the water. That's aeration or ventilation. Now, if you see a propeller that's got lots of pock marks on it, it looks like it's got acne, that's cavitation. That's those uh, bubbles that Professor Smart there was talking about, they, they can actually collapse on the propeller and it cause an implosion and pockmark the propeller. So I'd be very keen to hear from anyone who's had cavitation, suffered cavitation. Let us know in the comments how you solved the problem and let the wider group benefit from your experience.